Morning everyone. Right, had a change of plan today. Had a parcel arrive. And so it's very, very rarely I get, uh, I take a day off work for any reason whatsoever. This morning I'm making an exception. So just changed clothes about 40 minutes ago, half an hour ago. Parcel horse uh, just dropped in this box. Looks really well packaged. Um, and so I, I know from the return label on top, this is a an Echo Vintage CS60S, which has come back not as described. And so the reason I've taken the day off is because not everything's about money, but certain things are, are more than that to me. And so this particular saw, I knew its, its previous owner had had it for over two decades. Who was an associate, now a friend, and I know that he never worked on it. And the only thing it had changed is the rear handle support at the back. And I've not worked on the saw prior to being sold to the gentleman as a just a, a beautiful restoration project. So I know it has spark and a compression, and but wasn't stripped down. And the spark was tested years ago. But uh, there you go. So I'll tell you about the return. I'll tell you what the claim is, and so yeah, I've just changed out of work clothes. So you might find it interesting then. So I'm gonna give myself a time limit. We're gonna test it in, um, we'll see if we can test it top to bottom in 10 minutes. And let's test it top to bottom in 10 minutes. So I'm unsure of the different sizes I need for the Echo CS60. So I have brought out just a mixture of tools to test it. We're not gonna take anything off camera. We'll unbox it, cut it open on camera, put it on here, we'll zoom in, and we'll look at everything. And we'll just be fair. So we have a fuel priming bottle, may or may not be necessary if it's not sparking. Small impact wrench. Large impact wrench. Again, that'll become clear later, may or may not be needed. And the commons, 15, 17, 18, and 19 on the sockets. I want that though. Some very light, very light machine shop oil in a syringe, super light. Wrench, pliers, screwdriver, spark plug spanner, blade to open the box. Okay, so that's my tools. And in the back there's a Pioneer 650 and that's there for a very, very good reason. Not just not just for the sake of it. So this gentleman has very good feedback, over 2000, and but has several defects on his account in terms of obviously there's been some issues, but still has 100% feedback. And was unable to buy a saw because of the defects previously. Had previously bought a Pioneer 650 chainsaw from me, which um, I'm not sure how long ago it was. Maybe it's a month ago or two months ago, something like that. I'm not sure. And it had a problem with the pull start housing and then ended up having another pull start, but but firing and starting and just a piece of a beautiful, beautiful saw. You know, 1960s, 57mm piston, 103cc thumper from Pioneer, the last of their breed. And when that saw was delivered to the gentleman, the within a very short space of time I had a message back from him saying, hey. There's parts missing from this saw, and it's impossible for this saw to run. I want some money back because you never mentioned these bits were missing. So I messaged the guy very confused. You know, as you, some of you may know, I'm a huge fan of the 650s. I have six of them or something like that. Um, I just don't need any more. And uh, he sent me a picture showing the fueling system. So without getting nerdy and it's a, it's a black art all of its own. So this series of saw, like so many of the period, run the HL series carburetor where you have the pump and the diaphragm in the round chamber stacked as opposed to being on opposite ends of the carburetor body. And for the most part, all the service kits are almost identical across 20 years of carburetors. They're almost identical. And so 
one of the models that people might know. Okay, one's close to my heart then. Down on 110, we'll run an HL172. Uh, the 125s, the early ones, will run a, an HL127. Um, what else would people... Okay, synonymous then. Steel 08s will run a... Or 08Ss will run a 166, an A or a B. And steel 07s, HL again. They all look... If you put them on the bench next to each other, they look identical. So like a steel 07, the original, will run a, um, a 121 and Contra. Okay, I love the Contra engines. I have a couple. Um, they run a an HL112, A, B, C, D. Not so much the D, A, B and C. A 112, Carburetta. And, and then things like its later sister, the Contra 070, which ostensibly looks, is almost the same in terms of the engine. Just facelifted panels and a few, few changes. Um, that runs a I think a 300 series, a 324 or a 3, uh, it runs a 244 as well. There's a, no, a variation of, but but when you put them down, they all look the same. And the differences can be really, really slight. So on the 08Ss, if any of you know, on the left-hand side, you'll have the high and the low needles together. Okay. On the DDA 110, 125, you'll have the two H and L adjustment screws will be facing the rear of the handle of the saw um, on certain saws particularly ones that are American big saws because people would use them at altitude you'll find that often and for really good reason the the high needle will be a t-bar so you'll be able to adjust it because you know obviously if you're traveling up 5,000 feet air thinner you're gonna need to adjust the top end screw really really important but you know not so much when they arrive in the UK they'll be, they'll be set and they'll be okay but um, so anyway, long story short then, so the gentleman messaged me and said, hey, there's bits missing off the carburetor, and the Pioneers run an HL129. And the 129 is slightly unusual in that the low needle setting is at the left-hand side, so starter housing side, flywheel side of the engine, out towards the front of the engine, left. The high needle setting is a manual T-bar adjustment screw at the back of the engine, back right by your throttle trigger there. So you can adjust the high end. So he messaged me and said, hey, the screw's missing. Of course, he's photographing holes on the carburetor, which are factory blind holes. So I sent back, I said, look, it's, it's an easy mistake to make. You know, for the uninitiated, they don't have any holes in those. Uh, they don't have any screws in those holes because they don't fit them at the factory. And you don't need it to make this saw run. The saw already runs. So I sent him an IPL picture, etc. Never got back a sorry, did I, David? Never got back a sorry to say, hey, that was wrong, and the request for money. And I sent you a, a gift as well, even though there was nothing wrong. Okay, that's the background. This then is the second saw. And right, let's make sure we're in shot to see this properly. Yep, we're okay. All right. Um, So this saw then is 1960s Kiritsu. This is the CS60S. Gorgeous Japanese saws, absolutely beautiful. And um, points and condenser ignition, obviously. Yeah, late towards the tail end of the late 60s. Had a good run though as well. Um, a couple of different color schemes. In that handy box. Okay, so I also sent with the saw okay. I also sent with the saw um, manuals which okay cool manuals are in the box thank you sir it's nice to have the manuals back And the saw itself. Okay, no guide bar or there. Oh, no, okay. 
Dive bar and chain. Okay, cool. Right. Let's set the camera up. And come in and see what we've uh, what we've got then. Okay. Interesting as well, really interesting because this is um all right, let's make a bit of space. Impact. Impact. Fuel. Right. Did I mention spare spark plug? Just in case. So the gentleman said then that the well a couple of the claims are absolutely well, okay. We'll see what people think afterwards. Let's see what people think afterwards. All right. So he said that the um, when he's pulling the engine over, am I too close to the camera? Oh, boy. He said when he's pulling the engine over, sometimes the pulls are slipping. So I'm not sure. Oh, hello oh guys. Camera's moving on its own. Hang on. One second, got to grab an Allen key to tighten that up. Hang on. <laughs> Just when you think you've got all the tools out. Allen key. Um, he said this is slipping on the starter course. Okay, so. All I would say is that um, if you have an engine which is between 50 and 60 years old and it's not worked on, um, the starter pulls on the on the Japanese CS60s are very much like the uh, very similar to the Jobu um, L and M series saws, where they use two metal pulls which kind of twist out between a friction assembly. Unlike um, unlike having a fixed um, unlike having a fixed pulley with a dog which sits on the poles on the flywheel, this is round the other way. And you know, sir, if they've if you've pulled a few times and it's missed, I don't think it's unreasonable to think. I don't think it's unreasonable to think that they might need a lubrication. That's why I've got the oil out, just in case it's they're, they're sticking, but okay. All right, so. Bear in mind, it's sold for spares or repair in a restoration project, but we'll get to the main thing. So, so is, yeah, and I, I know, so I know the saw's been taken apart. I should say the gentleman sent me pictures of it disassembled. Okay, covers off, etc. Um, so then he said that the saw is uh, missing parts from the air filter. Well, if you're referring to the flock which is missing, I'm staggered that somebody would even mention that. It's between 50 and 60 years old. Um, when I think of the, the guys I deal with, the real men that I deal with that refurbish saws, um, in no particular order. Dougie. How would we feel, Dugs, if we only had to do a lube on a starter pull and replace some flock on a metal screen? The metal screen's here, so I, okay, I don't understand what that is about. I have no idea. Um, okay. Mike, Seamus, Jason, JT, Barry, Stuart, Sean, all the guys which have bought saws, which have been uh, labors of love absolute respect for the people that understand what they buy and have the enthusiasm but not just that the skill as well and the care to work and work through them right let's put the covers safe because they are prone to cracking let's put those down there okay then um so the crux of it no spark all right um all right so the ht lead is off and he did say the gentleman said he said the ht lead is um is i don't know if he said it was you know, kaput or knackered or whatever it was. So, um, yep. Okay, here we go then. This is the crux of it then. No spark. All right. 
So let's get to it. Let's zoom in. All right. Otherwise, who knows what we're doing? Hence why we've got the the drive out as well. Um, the impact drive. If we need to rotate its speed, I've got the the drive out because if the paws weren't engaging, we could just simply turn the flywheel, and it's a you know just a really quick test. All right, we'll do the spark plug spanner. Okay, here we are. Uh, I don't know if it's the same plug. I've got it listed if it is, but. Um, Yeah. Well, yeah, it's clean enough. Um, okay, let's see if we can get this cap. So, obviously, this is one of these very, very old HT leads. So it's got a very soft inner. It's a multi-stranded copper core with a very hard outer. They get worn. Um, I did say, you know, very clearly. They're restoration projects and I understand that this might the HT lead may not be in great condition. The HT lead might be in terrible condition. That's not the reason for returning us all. Right. What do we think then? Is that even connected? So I can see one of the challenges here is going to be... Eesh. Now that's pulled off um, to get that to sit nicely at all maybe. Maybe it's just okay but all right we'll do what we can. very important as well you can see what I'm doing otherwise what's the point all right uh, okay is that visible that's visible all right we'll zoom in and a bit more and we'll come close all right guys so so to summarize the only reason again then the only reason for taking the time off of work to do this is because of the ridiculous claim the ridiculous claim for parts missing on the last saw when there was nothing and no apology. Okay, all right, so do we have a spark? Okay, Paul missed once then. Nope, no spark. Kill switch. Okay, kill switch is sticky. This is interesting, isn't it? Pausing just on the middle there. Okay, let's get back to it. Unusual these old kill switches, aren't they? They've got a little um, captivated ball bearing on the inside. Sometimes they see solid and sometimes, you know, maybe they've got a bit of corrosion inside. Okay, let's try it again. Type for space. Okay. Ah <laughs> oh dear, let's see if we can catch the spark on camera. Hang on then. Ah oh dear, oh dear. Hang on. Hey guys, hope I hope that's coming out. I can't tell, just see how it's focused in. Well, so she is sparking. It is faint. Let me check it again. I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope you can see that. 
that is sparking. So I let's zoom out again. We'll come back. Right. Again, I don't know how long this video's been going, but right, okay, so I don't know what to say. David, this all sparks well. I don't know if you've tricked yourself with the kill switch. Um, how can I show this spot? Okay, one second. All right. Okay. Priming bottle. So, you know, all I would say to people is if you buy an old saw and you are really interested in them, you know, bear in mind that if they've not been worked on, you might need to lubricate starter pulls. There might be some flock missing from the air filter. The mesh screen is there. Um, untouched this saw as well prior to this. The HT lead might need lengthening. Um, hang on, let's go back. I feel a bit antagonized now that this is, uh, one second, <sighs> okay. Okay, David, the saw is in fact a runner. Okay, so I have packed it carefully. It hasn't been disassembled in 20 plus years. You've taken it apart, sent it back with the HT lead disconnected. It says the flywheel doesn't engage. And not only that, the saw actually starts and runs. Okay guys. I'm exasperated. <laughs> so, but anyway, these are absolutely gorgeous saws. This is the Japanese Echo CS60 Kiritsu in the uh, beautiful orange enamel. So the Japanese got an amazing history of, um, of metallurgy, working with metal and metal finishes. And some of their enameling is the best, the best in the world. It's just amazing. There it is, that's the CS60, and well, it's not a negative video, it's perhaps just a reminder to tell people, look, when you buy something old, do not be um, surprised, you know, if the, if the starter pulls aren't engaging instantaneously in every pull, because, you know, when you pull them on, let's switch off the ignition, it, it fires. <laughs> um, but I understand that, you know, okay, that you might have been not getting that connection, but that's down to the person working on it. That's not the saw. Um, just wait for the dogs to engage and catch. So you'll often hear, see me when I'm working on an engine or I demonstrate it. You'll see me pulling and pulling. Wait for the dogs to catch. Don't pull it if they're not engaged. What's the point? You're not, it's not a professional tree surgery saw. You're not on a job which is on a clock. Take your time, look after it. It's perfect. Guys, thanks for watching. Not at all depressing, just, you know, again, a shout out to all the people which I have dealt with, which do amazing jobs on old souls. I can't think of all your names, but you know who you are. Sean, Stuart, remember to message me about the chain. Um, Jason, Mike, JT. I got to remember everybody, am I? Um, Barry, I haven't heard from you a long time. Just so many guys with so many souls. Um, yeah. Respect to everybody keeping the beautiful vintage engines alive. Take care, guys. Bye for now.